Hello everyone, this is Jim Delapine, and I'd like to show you how to animate this butterfly that I created in Adobe Illustrator and bring that into Flash. Alright, so this is the butterfly here. I want to show you a few tricks and how to work with movie clips and how to do a few things in Flash with regards to animation for this kind of thing, okay? So, this is uh, simply a butterfly that um, I downloaded an image from Google, brought this into Illustrator, traced it over, I recreated one part of the butterfly's wing and then duplicated that and mirrored it, took advantage of the duplication process of the computer, and um, did the following. Okay, I then duplicated that layer, I selected this wing, and then I simply transformed it. All right, and eyeballed it into what I thought a butterfly's wing for, the, for a sequence of events or of angles that would create one complete flap for a butterfly's wing. All right, so if we go back, the second layer I have looks like that, and the third layer like that, and the fourth layer, and so on until I have one complete flap. All right, so I then made sure everything was saved here. All right, and made sure. All the layers are visible. I then went to File, Export. All right, and then I save this file as an SWF file. So from this drop-down menu, you have all these different options here. All right, I made sure I chose Flash SWF. Okay, and then hit Save. Now, I already have it saved here. But I hit save, it will ask me if I want to replace it. I'll say yes. And then you'll get an FWF options window come up. Okay? So in the export as options area here for this drop down menu, you're going to select AI layers to SWF frames from this drop down menu. Okay? So I'll select that. And once I hit OK, It'll be saved as a file you just saw. It, it will be saved actually as what's called a Swift file. So let me just navigate to that folder here and show you what I mean. Desktop. And a bit of water. So here. And this is what it, this is what the result is right here. Okay. You're going to see one complete flat. All right, I'll do that again. So what Flash is doing, or this SWF file or Swift file, all right, is it's animating each layer one time. Okay, so it's showing each one individually one time, so you get one complete flat. All right. Now what I'll do is jump over to Flash. I'm going to try to be as efficient as possible because I know that, you know, there's just a certain amount of time that students or anyone likes to listen to videos, but it's going to take a little bit of time to explain. There's so much to offer and so much to talk about, but um, I'll try to uh, do the best I can here. All right, so, um, so I've got my file set up here. All right, the first thing we're going to do is import that file. So we're going to go to File, Import to the library, okay, and then we have this SWF file, the flash file, there's the icon for it, also we want the Swift file, it's actually the, um, it stands for shockwave um, file, okay, so once I opened it up, brought it into the library, you'll see what's, uh, what looks like a small little blue icon with a little gear on it, all right, it's, a, it's uh, actually a movie clip file. Now, movie clips are very, very powerful. All right, in Flash, they're very, you can do so much with them. All right, they're, they're like tiny little packages that you can put all kinds of information inside of. And I'll show you what I mean. Um, we're going to go into the editing mode for this movie clip by double clicking on it. All right, so we double click on it and we see the butterfly on our screen here. Okay, so this center area here is the stage, all right, this is the library, uh, I mean I'm just repeating now what you all guys already know from the tutorials, so the library is where any kind of asset that gets brought into your file, 
your flash documents will will reside. It all has to be in here. Even if you import something to the stage, it will automatically show up within the library. All right, so keep that in mind. So you'll notice something a little different here now. We're in the editing mode for the butterfly movie clip. All right, and you'll notice up here in the upper left here, you'll see scene one, and then you'll see butterfly monarch complete. All right, SWF. So you'll see the name of the file, and it's kind of indented. So you're down or in one layer into into um, flash. All right, so you're in the editing mode. All right, so down below you'll notice that there are keyframes here. These are all keyframes with content on them. I can tell you can tell there's content if there's a black solid circle. So if I scrub this playhead, you'll see that this is uh, each keyframe represents one of the layers in Illustrator. Okay. All right. Now this is um, this is how it works. We're in the editing mode. We have to go back to the scene and now drag the actual butterfly onto the stage. We have to drag the movie clip onto the stage so now that it's visible. All right. Now let's take a look at what this looks like. All right. We're going to preview this now. All right. So when I double click on the Swift file before, you saw that butterfly uh, flap its wings one time. However, in Flash, it will loop. So if I hit Control Enter to preview it, you'll see the butterfly's wings flapping continuously. All right. So there's some nice little package. Um, it's it's an animation within that small little icon. Okay. So X out of that. And uh, let's see, our stage we're going to uh, look at is 800 pixels wide by 600 pixels high. All right, this is being seen at 24 frames per second. All right, our video is seen at 30 frames per second, so it's a little slower than video. All right, um, so that means that this butterfly is, uh, let's see, it's 10 frames, so it's 24 frames per second, so... It's going to, it's flapping like maybe two and a half times per second. Okay. All right. So we have our butterfly on stage. I'm going to drag it off the stage or out of the viewing area. All right. And I'm going to rename this layer B1. Butterfly one. All right. And I'm going to create a new layer. All right. Now with, um, what am I doing here? Uh, oh, I know why. I was still focused on icons here. So I now have a new layer, and I'm going to go to my text tool, and I'm going to make sure that my size is maxed out. I'm going to choose Arial Black. I want a heavy font for what I'm about to do. And I'm just going to click on the stage and just type my initials here. Um, Arial Black. Okay. Um, we can increase the letter spacing or tracking if we'd like. Um, we'll leave it as is. I'm going to scale this up manually by going to the free transform tool and going to any corner and clicking and dragging outward. And as I drag, I'm going to hold that shift. Shift will constrain it. Okay. So I'll now drag this down here to the bottom. I can, um, Change the spacing if I uh, choose to. Um, I'll leave it like that. All right. So with it still active or selected, I'm going to hit Control V to break apart. So I found that up to in uh, let's see here, break apart. Control V. So I'm modifying the shape for the text. I'm breaking it apart. It is no longer editable text. It is now art. Actually, that's not true. I still could edit the text. All right. So uh, now I'm going to make sure they're all selected. And I'm going to now go in and I'm going to distribute them to layers. All right. I want them all on their own layer. So this way it will give me the option of animating each layer individually. So I will go to Modify, Timeline, Distribute to Layers. Okay, so you'll notice down here now, um, it put each one of these characters on a 
its own layer. So you see a J and an I and an N here. All right, the layer two is blanket. Remove these from that one layer and put them on their own individual layers. All right. So that's pretty cool. So now that means we can animate them individually. Now what I want to do is extend the timeline. Um, I want this to be around four seconds long. All right. So um, actually 98, um, actually 96 would be exactly four seconds. We'll just leave it in an even 100. All right. So I'm going to add keyframes up to 100. Frame. So it's not going to hit F5. Okay. So that extends the visibility for all of these layers. All right. And it gives us the opportunity to now create a motion queen. All right. So if I select the butterfly layer, what I want the butterfly to do is come in and fly in, land on the J, and carry the J off and flop it into this corner here. All right. So that means I'm going to right click and select create motion screen for the butterfly layer. Alright. So starting out here and the butterfly is way too big, so let me scale the butterfly down. Okay. We'll do it up here. Or her, I should say her. So the butterfly can change female. now. Alright. So um We'll leave her right there, and now I'm going to extend my playhead. I'll grade the playhead to, um, let's say 20, the 20 frame. And I'm going to drag the butterfly down on top of this J. So I'm telling Flash when the animation gets to frame 20, that's where I want, I want the butterfly to be in this location right here. All right. Uh, let me rotate it a little bit. All right, so you'll notice that there's a green line. All right, this is the path the butterfly will take. So I'm now going to go to my selection tool or black arrow, and I can bend that line. All right, so I want this butterfly to fly in and be at this location and take this path, and it will be at this location at the 20th keyframe. And you'll note that. Once I let go of this butterfly, when it got on top of the J here, it created this small black diamond, which is a keyframe. Alright. So, now, I'm actually going to scale this butterfly in a little bit more. A little too large. So now, if I go, if I play it, go backwards, you'll notice that it started out large, and it's getting smaller. Okay, so I'm now going to go forward a little bit, and now I'm going to hit F6. I want the butterfly to remain in this location from this point to this point. And then I'm going to drag my playhead up here to maybe frame 50. All right, and then drag my butterfly to where I want it to be at frame 50. All right, so... That's what's going on. So notice now Flash gets a little finicky. She's coming back. She's kind of backing up a little bit. So I have to zoom in. Alright. And to get a, a real good look at this. And I'm going to go to my direct selection tool for my white arrow. Alright. So you need, if you're familiar with the Bezier curve, you'll, you'll know what I'm about to talk about. Alright. So the path of the butterfly Lock a little bit of layers here. The path of the butterfly uh, needs to be edited, and wherever the butterfly is changing direction, there's what's called an anchor point. And if you select these anchor points with this white arrow, handles will pop out that will allow you to control the shape of the path. All right, so the butterfly is tending to want to follow this handle here, so we're going to trick it and pull the handle in. And now this part's a little a little tricky to, to follow. All right, so now that means that the butterfly will come in and stay here and then take off. All right, so what I want to happen is, let me zoom out a little bit. Uh, let's see here. Uh, if we go to percent. 
So when the butterfly lands, it's getting smaller now, all right? I want it to stay there, but I want her to turn. So at this keyframe right here, second keyframe, I'm actually going to rotate her, okay? So now she should be flying off and following the path, and she looks pretty good there, all right? Um, let me just change her a little bit right here, and also notice that these paths, you know, you can edit them. But it takes a little bit of knowledge with the anchor point here. All right, so you can bend the shapes and, and by pulling these handles and moving the anchor points. All right, so we've got anchor points here, and keeping in mind that the butterfly will follow that path. So you're directing the path of the butterfly. All right, so what this looks like now is this: if we preview it, Control Enter. Okay. Now with a loop again, but notice the butterfly is coming behind the J. I want it to come in front, so I'm going to change the stacking order. I'm going to bring the B1 layer to the top. So now it's going to come in and be on top of the J. All right. So let me unlock the J layer and lock the butterfly layer. Now we'll now work with the J. So I'm going to create a motion tween out of the J layer. All right. So now, once we do that, we're going to have this butterfly carry the J off, but we want it to pivot around a certain point. So right now, this this J um, has a center point that will rotate around the center. We don't want that. Okay, I want it to rotate around this pivot point here. So that means going to the selection tool, oops, I'm sorry, staying in the free transform tool and moving that circle or the pivot point up to this point right here. Now it will rotate around that point. Alright, that's what I want. So, um, at this point right here, where the butterfly is about to take off, I'm going to hit F6. That will create a keyframe on the J layer, keeping that J there up until this point. Remember, each keyframe contains settings. All right, so there's a position setting in there that we're telling uh, Flash to keep it here at this point. I'm now going to come up here, right about here. I'm now going to drag my J up here. I'm also going to rotate. Okay. All right. So now it looks like this. Sort of like carrying the J off. Okay. And now we'll go forward. And we're going to have the J fall and come down here. All right. But we're going to have it kind of like represent reality and fall on its side. Alright, so um, we want it to follow gravity also because these butterflies are carrying the J and now it would fall kind of like this. So we follow this direction, something like that. Alright, so it looks like that. Okay, so let's preview this. Control Enter. There you go. All right. So we can also do something else. All right. At this point right here, let's select this. So we can have the color change. Uh, let's fool around with that. All right. So here, um, let's see what we can do here. Let's fool around with this. Let's go to red. All right. Um, oh, we'd have to do something else here. We'd have to do something else. Let's see here. We'd have to break the support again. So control B, I believe. Um, uh, actually, it's too late. Never mind. 
All right, so let's keep things as is. All right, so I mean there is a, a method, but it's too late now, of breaking this apart again. All right, and we have this more from black to red, from one point in time to another. All right, so we now uh, I'll do the same thing again for the eye. All right, so just to repeat all this. So let's go down. Let's take the butterfly movie clip and bring it in. Oops, I'm sorry. We have to go to this new layer. We're going to bring everything in on its own layer. So we'll call this new layer up here B2. All right, so we have B1 and B2. And we're going to bring the second butterfly in. And we'll bring a second instance of this movie clip in. All right, we've heard the title instance. Okay. All right, and we'll scale it down. Just to scale her down. Right, and uh, bring her over here and turn her around. All right. So now, what we need to do is create a motion tween out of this layer. So, on the layer here, I'm right clicking and selecting create motion tween. All right. I'm going to select the eye layer. All right. I'm going to bring the pivot point up to the upper left hand side and note that I have to be in the free transform tool in order to do this. Alright, so now uh, back at the butterfly I want to tell her where I want it to be at a certain point in time so I'm going to scroll forward and right about here is where I want her to be. Right about at, now uh, let me go for a little bit. Alright, so now I'll drag her over here, rotate her, and then we have to rotate her again. Um, let's see here. Yeah, she's going to come in here. She's actually also going to be spinning a little bit. Uh, we'll have to fix that. All right. So now um, I'm going to keep her there. So I'm going to F6, go to the end, and here it is, over here. All right, and now, again, we have to fool around with, so she backs up once again, so we have to mess around with this handle here. So you have to, with the direct selection tool active, kind of like find this handle here that we put underneath and drag this into this point so that now she'll stay there. Alright, so she comes down and we want her to turn. So just keep in mind that you're making these edits at different points in time. Okay. Um, now I need to change the rotation for her and try to get her to go in the right direction. Um, yeah, we see we have to force it. Yeah, see it's so yeah. flying right here. I may have to just force her to turn. Yeah, but sometimes, well, let's have to do a loopy loop, okay? <laughs> because it does get weird and um, finicky and uh, don't want to spend things out. So right at this point here for the eye, we're going to create a keyframe right here by hitting F6. Um, uh, so F6. Oh, I wonder why something wasn't happening. I didn't create a motion screen. Alright, so now F6. Alright, so now our will be carrying it off. And we want... Okay, we'll, 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 we'll,
Have it go here and rotate this towards us. The effect of gravity. So you also have to bend the arc to follow the butterfly. Okay. So now I'm going to carry it off. Right, go here and go to a little more trickier, a little trickier, and we'll bring, we'll have this hit the edge of the document, but we have to kind of, now we're going to have to be a little bit tricky with the anchor points here, bend them, and Mess around and play. Um, yeah, it takes a little bit of doing here. So let's look at this. Bam, bam. And now we'll bring in and we'll see how that looks out. <laughs> well, I don't know about that. <laughs> So let's just take a look. I don't like that loopy loop at the end. So I, this is good that all these little mishaps are occurring because this is um, this will show you what I need to go through to edit all this. All right. So um, and. And the editing process and figuring how, out how things are need to be done is all part of it. So, um, and this is all messed up now. <laughs> this is it. Yeah. So I mean, I'm going to select this and for the exact keyframe. All right, at this point, let's see if I can fix it. All right, let's see how that looks. It's a little too static. Okay. Let's see how that looks. I mean, you basically get the idea. So, okay, so it kind of works out a bit more interestingly. All right. So now, um, the last thing we're going to do is stop this. All right. Otherwise, we'll continually loop. So if I put um, an, uh, a layer on top, call it action, we'll do a tiny little bit of um, action script here. All right, at the end here, I wanted this, the movie to stop at the end, so I'll hit F7 to create a blank keyframe in here. All right, and then I'll go into the actions and type in um, SDOP. Open bracket, and close bracket, and then semicolon, and then we'll, and that now has an action created. You can see the tiny little A there. So now, control enter. Okay. 
didn't want to go, 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 go. Okay, this one. Okay, so what did I not do correctly? Okay, so if I go here, um, you see how this is how um, finicky and temperamental um, action script is. I typed in the word stop in uppercase. And that meant that it didn't read it. Now, what if I disappear? Ah, okay. Because it stopped here. Look at this. You see that my keyframe did not extend to this keyframe here? So if I drag this back here, one frame. See, this is, this is good that this is happening. Showing you the possible Frustrations that can occur and how to fix them. All right, so you have to. I'm telling the class to stop at this frame here. Before, my frame didn't extend to the end. So now you'll be able to see that oh, I stay there. See that it stays there. However, before we had the action stopped in one frame after. So here it's not visible. See that the R is not visible. So now. See that? Disappears. All right, guys. Uh, let me stop here. I'm getting a little long-winded here. And um, I hope you guys get some benefits from this, all right? And I'm going to do another demo for you guys that will incorporate buttons and other things, too. All right? Okay. I hope you got some value from this.